Alex Rins moving into Yamaha, Franco Morbidelli. The, the talk is, the talk could be heading to the Cafeteria. How is that first move going to affect you? Uh, a bit surprised. Uh, right. Clearly there are many seats in Ducati that are still not uh, signed. Is that your, your preference to stay with Kamak next year? Yeah. 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 yeah, clearly because the, the bike is uh, the winning bike at the moment. The winning bike at the moment. The moment. A couple of rumours as well, maybe the potential of you moving away from the Cat Any truth in that? Truth. I didn't sign yet, so then you are forced to, to think about something else. Something else. Yes, 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 yes. Matt. Joan Zarco. Well, we are told today by the man himself that we should know where his seat will be in 2024. A firm two-year contract offer with LCR Honda with the option of 2026 as well. Uh, as a sportman, 33 years old, it's uh, something I had to, to think a little bit because I realized that the last three years, I was always pushing and that I think one year contract, one year contract, but after five or six races, you already have to stress yourself to think about the future because you are not sure if you can stay. And as long as you're competitive, you want to stay. For me, he travaille comme quelqu'un qui a 25 ans. Donc, euh, avoir sa forme physique, avoir son expérience, pour moi, c'est une qualité sur la grille de, du, du MotoGP. Je suis Grégory Mallet, je suis un ancien nageur de l'équipe de France olympique et j'ai été champion du monde en 2013. Euh, je travaille avec Johan depuis janvier, je suis son préparateur mental. Je ne sais pas piloter de moto, mais par contre je sais euh, comment réagit un athlète de haut niveau euh, dans les moments compliqués où il y a du stress. Sometimes I'm too much angry when it's not necessary. So that's maybe the weak point. And I should also sometimes enjoy even more, even if it's not a, a victory. So now I'm doing better, but sometimes like even if I cannot win, I'm not happy. And that's not a very good mood. I should uh, maybe uh, let the, the emotion go a little bit more out sometimes, but uh, I'm not controlling, it's just myself that is uh, like this. Je travaille sur sa capacité à mettre des mots et du vocabulaire sur ses émotions pour avoir la compréhension de qui il est au fond de lui. Et je travaille sur euh, la capacité de comprendre que s'il y a un échec, on apprend avec l'échec, mais ce n'est pas Johan l'homme qui est en échec. C'est juste l'action qui a été un échec. Greg was his target to, even when he's not uh, super good, try to, to have a better uh, message in the mind, uh, a better message to, to myself, more positive than just destroy myself because uh, it's difficult to win. Je trouve que depuis janvier, Johan respecte plus l'homme qu'il est. Euh, et donc, euh, malgré des échecs, des fois, j'ai l'impression qu'il fait bien la différence. Il fait plus la différence entre qui il est et ce qu'il fait. Allez, tu te détends, tu respires. Moi, je suis la grande sœur de Joanne, Séverine. Moi, je suis ostéopathe depuis 15 ans. et J'ai développé le travail en vibration, en son, avec les bols tibétains. travailler directement dans la cellule du corps. Les cellules, elles vibrent comme 
un caillou qu'on jette dans la mare, il y a une réaction de l'eau. Et du coup, euh, dans le corps, on est fait à 70% d'eau, de cellules, et la vibration, elle permet d'harmoniser tout un ensemble dans le corps. Essaye de vraiment être de relâcher complètement. Je, je, je suis l'impression d'être relâché. Ouais, mais au moment où je bouge ton bras, il y a un petit réflexe, tu vois, de je bouge avec toi. La vie, c'est pas que la moto. La vie, c'est c'est tout le temps, c'est chaque jour, c'est trouver le la joie, le, 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 le bien-être dans l'instant présent. Et je pense que de rester ancré très dans la famille, les soins qu'on fait où on est vachement à l'écoute du corps, à l'écoute de sa respiration, et de créer une bulle de, de puissance de la vie et de s'échapper un peu aussi du monde moto qui est quelque chose de dur, toujours sous pression, toujours dans le stress. I like to eat uh, with a good, uh, uh, I mean, good balance uh, of things. But like tonight, I just do pasta, easy pasta. It's not the best for the dieta, but uh, I'm a little bit tired and uh, and uh, it's easy to do. I try to eat a bit of everything and control over all the, the quantity. That's the, the most important. Uh, I try to have a few things with uh, nutrition. But um, then I understood what I needed. So then I try also to remove totally the meat, to have uh, like, a, not vegan, but a vegetarian uh, diet. It was nice to follow. I have the no gluten pasta. I have the normal pasta. I have a black rice. Sometimes good also. <laughs> no gluten tonight. Perfect. This oil is um, yeah from the from the garden because I have many olive tree, and it's very good. So I love it. I give to parents to a bit of family. Then I keep a bit for me. And the good music is very important. <laughs> MotoGP is strange because you can, uh, you need to be super fit, but sometimes some guys with an injury, they are doing super result. So with the injury, if you're doing good result, you think that it's not necessary to be super fit. I think it's necessary to be fit, to be good when you are not good on the bike, like to compensate a bit with your body and then to have a good energy for all the season, that is very important. But uh, the main thing is the training, physical training, and then the nutrition is like a plus to feel even better. But when you do a lot of sport, you cannot eat uh, or really drink alcohol or these things because then uh, the next day it's harder to do the training. Now we'll do a little bit of bicycle, two hours and 15 minutes, I think, or depends the speed. We we'll still have fantastic days here in South of France. I will uh, do some recovery with the bicycle. It's like a long aerobie to generate a good energy on the body. I didn't expect my uh, bicycle was uh, so dirty, <laughs> so I like to have a uh, a bit of pin bike when I go. I do two trainings per, per day, and it's most of the time this kind of uh, long aerobie, running or bicycle. And then there is uh, a little bit some uh, activities like more for like a, the gym for the muscle or uh, 
the, the climbing is good also for the arms and the body. Now a little break. It's my uh, pleasure after uh, the, the nice tour. Nice tour is already a, a pleasure. But when I'm not pushing, oh, I stop. I have uh, sparkling water or coffee or depends what, what I need. Merci. And then go up and it's the last 30 minutes to go home. So yes, a little break for the, before the last 30 minutes. sont bien les cuisses. Pas, pas trop tendu. Ça fait du bien le vélo. After the training, um, I get a little massage. Alex is the physiotherapist that is following me uh, on, uh, on all the GPs. is uh, taking care of the body for all the Grand Prix since uh, two years now, 22, 23, and then next year also. It's all, always helping to, to have a, a quick recovery as well as possible. We have few memories. I don't put them at the moment like in a big place. And even this accommodation could be better, but I'm not very specialist to to put the thousand things of the motorbike and, and show it. Almost, if you are in the house, you forget that I'm doing motorbike. And the two from Qatar was very nice because um, after Qatar, I was leading the championship in 21. What a race. Joan Zarco comes up to second place for the second time in seven days here in Doha. And he's the new world championship leader as well. And it was just... Uh, after the, like, the big COVID season in 2020, my first season with Ducati. So then I, I began the relationship with Pramac and immediately two podiums. There is the my victory in Malaysia when I got my second title in 2016. In the Moto2, I got what I could catch the, the target. In MotoGP, I didn't catch yet. It has been it's more difficult. and. Uh, but as long as I try to catch the target to, to win races or, or be champion, then you get trophies because you do many podiums. But you don't get what you really love to, to win. It's a really a, a last step that uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's uh, hard to, to catch. Our objective this year is to try to stay in the first five of the World Championship, to try to do some podium, and of course to try to win the first race of Johan. Never win in MotoGP, and we try to do. Not easy. Now the level is very high, but every race we try to do. Huge credit goes to Johan Zarco. What a recovery by him to take second place. Johan Zarco does take a home podium. My role in the team uh, Pramac is the crew chief of uh, Joan Zarco. The relation with Joan starts at the end of 2014, when you start to make a uh, Moto2 in IO Motorsport. And after this, uh, we stay two here together. Uh, and after, okay, our way is uh, coming different, and we we coming again together in the beginning of this year. Massimo, yes, I got my two titles in Moto2 with him, 2015 and 16. Having this very good remembers with him, overall the high quality of work that we had together, with the target is to, to find it back this year. Third place goes to Joan Zarco. What a day for Prima Pramac Racing. Three times in a row for Joan Zarco. And uh, it was, thanks to him, a different approach that has been very interesting, but this different approach also, because the Joan of now is not doing the, the same thing as in the past. I, I find 
One rider more uh, technical about the person, I don't change, he don't change so much. He remained like a uh, very human guy. To working uh, very, very hard for to coming to the, re the result. Sometimes, uh, I don't know, it's not perfect, the style, and he tried to learn a lot, and he uh, make his concentration to working a lot during the weekend, but also at the, for the training at home. Every day is very hard uh, training. Yeah, change a bit the, the approach of, uh, of the, the sport I'm doing, the way I need to have my training, and even giving 100%, be happy about this 100%, even if sometimes you, you cannot win. We need uh, perfection, but if you have perfection, but not a higher mentality, you are nothing. And in this moment, it's uh, very, very important. The mentality is very, very important, the most important. Joan Zarco, he has to make the move. He does on the inside. Martin might even miss oh, the move. What an incredible last lap here. 119 Grand Prix of waiting. Get ready for the Frenchman's backflip. Joanne Zarco, finally, we can say the flying Frenchman is a MotoGP winner here in an unbelievable and incredible Australian Grand Prix. I'm really happy the, the way I've been growing up with Ducati, technically, and uh, also as a sportman, because uh, it was necessary to change many things to just stay at the level, uh, even not for, for winning, but just stay at the level. I understood all these things, and, um, and uh, I am in the game. Cross the line in first position, uh, after so many races uh, trying to do it, it's a uh, really high emotion, so um, I need to, to swallow it. <laughs> to take it well and uh, enjoy tonight because uh, I don't want to cry at the moment, but uh, I think it will come soon. Huge congratulations. <laughs> With Ducati, I had the chance to come back to the highest level and still open new doors to keep pushing in this MotoGP world. Because the level is so high that you can, uh, if you're not doing a good year, you can uh, be kicked out. Already at 28 or 29 years old, it seems it was uh, the, the end of this MotoGP story. And now 33 years old, he's still going pretty well, uh, fighting for the top five in the championship. I would like to see myself still fighting for the next two years. I would love to be more or less where I am now. Happiness is to perform on the MotoGP. I'm not performing super good. I'm still happy because I'm able now to see that uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing.